An authentication protocol is the method used to exchange authentication credentials. It defines the type of credentials that are accepted as identification. Say we have a computer here that wants to connect to a server that requires authentication. In this situation, the server is sometimes called the authenticator because it accepts and verifies device credentials. One simple way to authenticate is for the authenticator to ask, who are you and what's your password? Early authentication protocols were nothing more than this, and in most cases, the password wasn't even encrypted, it was a plain text. As you can see, this isn't a very secure authentication method. Someone could intercept this conversation, capture the username and password, and then use those credentials to gain access to the server. Luckily, now there are various authentication protocols that strengthen the authentication process. The first protocol we'll look at is CHAP, or Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol. CHAP uses what's called a shared secret that pre-configured on both devices for authentication. So say we have a device that wants to communicate with the server using CHAP. First, both devices would need to be configured with a shared secret or password. Let's say the password is study, and the authentication device associates this shared secret with a username. When a device sends a communication request, CHAP uses a method called a challenge response mechanism. First, the authenticator generates a challenge string. A challenge string is just a series of characters or some kind of digital data. The device takes this challenge string and using the shared secret as an encryption key, performs what is called a hash on the challenge. And the hash is basically a transformation of that challenge data. Next, this device sends the challenge hashed value and the user information back to the authenticator. The authenticator matches the user to the pre-configured shared secret. Then using the shared secret, it performs the same hash operation on the challenge information to create another hash. At this point, the authenticator compares its hashed value with the hash value from the device. If the two values match, then the authenticating device assumes that the shared secret values also match. If the shared secret value on one of those devices was different, the hashing mechanism would result in a different value. In fact, a good hashing mechanism results in something that is extremely different. If the two hash values don't match, the authenticating device knows that the shared secrets didn't match. Notice that in this process, the actual password or shared secret is never transmitted not even in an encrypted form. It's important to realize that the hash value sent is not an encrypted form of the password itself, but rather an encrypted form of the challenge. Even if someone intercepted this hash value, the mathematical function that's performed makes it impossible to extract the original shared secret. Another authentication protocol is called MSCHAP, or Microsoft Challenge Handshake Authentication Protocol. MSCHAP is a variation of CHAP that's supported on Microsoft computers. MSCHAP has two different versions. MSCHAP version 2 adds mutual authentication functionality. With mutual authentication, the connecting device can verify the identity of the authenticating device. So in addition to credentials being passed in this direction to validate the identity of this device or user, credentials can now also go the other way so that this computer can verify that it's connecting to the right computer. Now we have to note that MSCHAP isn't a secure protocol anymore. It has several known weaknesses and security vulnerabilities, so you shouldn't use MSCHAP. Both CHAP and MSCHAP are typically used to authenticate remote access clients. Another authentication method is EAP, or Extensible Authorization Protocol. EAP really isn't an authentication protocol by itself. It's more of a method for identifying which authentication protocol to use. After two devices using EAP agree to perform authentication, they must then agree on which protocol to use. EAP allows you to support many different authentication protocols, including protocols that haven't been developed yet. With EAP, devices could decide to use smart cards or certificates for authentication. Some different versions of EAP are also available, depending on the specific need. PEEP, or Protected Extensible Authentication Protocol, is a more secure version of EAP that provides authentication to a WLAN that supports 801.1x. PEEP uses a public key over TLS. EAP Fast, or Flexible Authentication via Secure Tunneling, 
is a version of EAP developed to substitute LEAP, performing session authentication in wireless networks and point-to-point -point connections. EAP Fast is more secure than LEAP, which is vulnerable compared to TLS Tunnel. And EAP TLS is a version of EAP that uses TLS protocol. It's used mostly by wireless vendors, and it's one of the most secure EAP standards out there. The next authentication protocol we'll talk about is Kerberos. Kerberos perform both authentication and authorization for resources. Kerberos uses tickets to identify authenticated users or devices, and it has several important components. First, Kerberos uses an authentication server, or AS. This authentication server is used to authenticate users and computers. Second, Kerberos uses a service server. The service server holds resources such as a shared printer, a file, or some kind of network resource that has controlled access. And the third component is what's called a ticket granting server. And in some implementations, the authentication server and ticket granting server are combined into a single entity. Now, Kerberos authentication works like this. Let's say that a user wants to authenticate and they send their authentication credentials, maybe a username and a password, to the authentication server. The authentication server validates the user credentials and it issues the user a special ticket called a ticket granting ticket. This ticket granting ticket simply says that this is an authorized user that's allowed to request another ticket. It's essentially a ticket that can be used to get a ticket. When a user needs to access a specific service, it takes the ticket granting ticket and shows it to the ticket granting server. And it basically says, look, my identity is validated. Now, can I have authorization to use the resource? The ticket granting service then looks into its database to identify whether the user is allowed access. If the user is allowed access, the user is issued a special ticket called a client to server ticket. You might think of it as a ticket that gives them access to the resource. The user then shows this ticket to the service server and the service server allows access. So again, the general process is the user authenticates to the authentication server and gets a ticket granting ticket. The ticket granting ticket is shown to the ticket granting server, which issues a client to server ticket. The client to server is shown to the service server, which allows the access. So the authentication credentials get me a ticket, which gets me another ticket, which eventually allows me access. Now this may seem to be a convoluted method of allowing access, but the benefit is that when a user needs to access a separate service, he doesn't go through the entire authentication process a second time. Instead, he simply takes the ticket granting ticket, which is still valid, and submits it to the ticket granting server to obtain a different client to server ticket, which is used for the other service. Similarly, if the same user needs to go back and re-access the service, it simply submits its original ticket without requesting another ticket. Tickets themselves have expiration times, and if the ticket is still valid, then the service will accept those tickets. So the Kerberos system, even though it's fairly complex, allows a user to authenticate once and gain authorization once to each service without having to re-authenticate. Because tickets have a valid time period, it's important that all servers have synchronized clocks so the timestamp within the tickets can be compared to a common clock to prevent users from modifying the system time to make an expired ticket appear valid. Another authentication protocol is 802.1x. 802.1x was originally developed as a method of authorizing ports on an Ethernet network. 802.1x is now also used with wireless networks and other security implementations. Let's look at how 802.1x authentication works. 802.1x authentication uses a connection point along with some form of authentication server, typically a RADIUS server. So we have a connection point here, which is usually a switch or wireless access point. And the access point is configured to allow only authenticated traffic. This access point is also connected to the authentication server or RADIUS server. When a client connects to the access point, it's asked to provide authentication credentials. The client sends these credentials to the access point, which passes them to the authentication server. The authentication server uses a database to validate those credentials. If the credentials match, the access point is notified that the client has authenticated successfully. The client is then allowed network access. 
802.1x authentication is an extension of the extensible authentication protocol and uses EEP. So when the client computer authenticates to the authentication server, it might do that with usernames and passwords, or it might use certificates. The authentication server might even use a smart card or some kind of biometric authentication. In other words, 802.1x uses EEP to negotiate the specific type of credentials or the protocol that is used to exchange information. Let's review what we've talked about. In this lesson, we looked at several authentication protocols you can use. Most of the time, the situation will dictate which authentication protocol should be used. For example, CHAP and MSCHAP are typically used for remote access connections, and the different versions of EEP are used with other protocols to negotiate which authentication protocol should be used. Kerberos is used to authenticate users within LAN with usernames and passwords. 802.1x authentication is typically used for port-based authentication for wireless device authentication.